Hey guys, how's it going? Is this bombastic enough for you? I don't feel that good this week, so I'm not doing any crazy skit. I've been playing lots of After the Fall this week. I've been having a lot of fun with it, so I wanted to make a tips and trips tricks video for people who are maybe new to the game or people who maybe get it after Christmas when they get their Oculus Quest. Um, yeah, so this is my video for the week. I normally make a little bit more higher quality content, but bear with me. I've just been really sick. The sickness has been kicking my butt. So uh, I hope you guys do enjoy though, and I hope it helps anyone out there who needs it. So thank you very much. And remember, if you're new here, subscribe and let me know how you're enjoying uh, after the fall in the comment section down below. Thank you very much. So starting right away with the beginner tips. First off, you're gonna find ammo boxes along your journey in After the Fall, and there's two different kinds. The green ammo boxes allow you to collect ammo one time from them, and that's per teammate. The purple ammo boxes are respawnable ammo, so you can shoot it once or hit it once and then come back in a few minutes and it'll be replenished and you can reshoot it or resmack it again and get more ammunition out of it, and that applies for all players as well. Beginner tip number two is the fact that you're going to be finding little collectibles throughout the missions called floppy disks. And what you do is at each safe house, you want to place any floppy disks that you guys have found into the arcade machines. So that way it uploads and you guys will get new items at the end of your run. Now this is not something to war over with other teammates as any floppy disks will upload and all players will get something at the end of the match. And to store the floppy disks while you're in the run, you actually have to put them into your arm, your wrist, where you store other items such as healing and pipe bombs, but uh, you will have to use a slot if you want to use that floppy disk. During each run, you have about three sections with safe house posted up in between each section, and that acts as a bit of a save point. Now, in these little rooms, you can actually buy more pipe bombs and healing items. The big thing is that you do not want to press the red button to open the safe room doors until you've asked if everyone is ready, because as soon as you press the safe house button, you are actually going to stop anyone from being able to purchase anything from the arcade machines. So if anyone's low on health or does not have enough items to go into the next round, you kind of just screwed them over. So that's not good. Tip number five is to listen for the sounds that indicates if all the zombies in the current wave have been cleared, and it sounds like this. It's over here. I do not know how it is on the Oculus Quest 2 version, but on the PC version, snap turning is on by default, and myself, personally, I hate snap turning, it's very annoying. To do this, you click in the right thumbstick, go to settings and movement, and under rotation mode, you can change it to continuous. After about your first two missions in After the Fall, you're gonna get a rocket fist item where you can actually shoot rockets out of your glove, and essentially, it's not explained at all how to use this, what you actually have to do is be holding no weapon, turn your fist sideways, you'll see the little rocket actually kind of activate and move around, and then you wait for enemies to come on screen and get the little red boxes around them, and then you can let go of the trigger and you will shoot tons and tons of rockets on them. In between the different runs, you can actually go back and upgrade your equipment in a little gun range area. You might actually notice that there's hooks on the wall, and that is to actually store different weapons that you collect throughout the game. This is essentially your only way of keeping weapons that you've collected throughout the game without having to repurchase them or refine them. And going on to how to get more harvest, it's actually a little less about how to get more harvest and more about how to use harvest efficiently. And first and foremost, if you want more harvest, there's two very simple ways to do that. Switch to manual reloading and play at higher difficulties. So aside from manual reloading and higher difficulties, you actually can just use harvest more efficiently, essentially avoid buying any guns. And I know it's gonna be tempting when you first play the game, especially if you're starting out on lower difficulties. When I was playing on Steam VR, I actually purchased guns quite a few times and it ends up just wasting a lot of harvest instead of just finding them naturally throughout the game. If you just bump up the difficulty from the easiest, just one notch up, you'll probably find some weapons on the first round you play. I actually got a shotgun on the first mission I played on PSVR. 
Now moving on to actual strategies and tips around strategic maneuvers, I would actually recommend that if you have a group of actual friends that you play with and that you're planning on playing with for a while is consider figuring out what weapons you each like and kind of diversify so that way you actually have different roles in the game. For instance, I've noticed that a lot of people really do like the submachine guns and the M16 style rifles where I like the shotguns. So since I like shotguns, that means that in tight corridor areas, I need to be the one to be going first and making sure that I am constantly with ammunition in my shotgun so that way I can kind of crowd control if we're getting uh, overran by zombies close up and personal. Just as well, if there are bigger enemies on the ground in kind of tighter corridor areas, I need to be the one trying to shoot off those plates and getting headshots very close up and personal. And if you're more into the M16, perhaps you need to stand back a little bit and make sure you crowd control the actual smaller zombies while your friend is perhaps aggroing with his shotgun, the boss monster trying to remove the plates and, you know, blow up the weak points. All while you're just clearing out the path of zombies so he doesn't really have to waste ammunition or, you know, reload time on trying to fight those zombies off. Those are just two ideas on how you can be versatile and create a pretty balanced team so that way you can get through those harder difficulty runs much more efficiently and effectively and also you can be preparing for the new content that will eventually release. Right along with finding extra weapons, medication, or pipe bombs is that you want to use callouts. This does not have to be anything elaborate, just make sure your squad knows and can fill up on these things if they don't have any, and you can actually look at their ID and it will say what they have in their inventory. Now this game does have friendly fire and a great way to avoid friendly fire is to use more communication when you're about to go through doorways or just come up with a basic plan if you know the mission and level structure and where the enemies are going to come from as you get more familiar with the runs you can actually just kind of you know plan and say hey i got this point or i got this point and then also a big thing that i was doing to try to avoid this was i started crouching as i went through doorways so that way i didn't get shot and i didn't shoot anybody else and in general if you're crouching you can usually uh, get some pretty good shots it's just very hard to manual reload so that's kind of out of the window if you're going to go for that approach. And my last bit of tips are regarding community and social interaction tips. First off, if you're a newcomer, don't be afraid to ask questions. If people have been on many runs, we're usually more than welcoming of new players and we want to help you get better at the game and get more weapons and, you know, just play and enjoy this game longer because the more players that is stay with this game the longer vertigo is going to support it and the longer we're going to get awesome new content and also consider joining vertigo's after the fall discord channel because it's a great way to talk to people to see what kind of bugs are going on and to find potential fixes to issues that you've had and as you get better and learn more about the game and how it works and as you start getting more familiar with runs and difficulties and just anything in regards to after the fall make sure you help newcomers to the game so that way they feel more welcome and they want to stay and we can all keep this game alive and if you're playing just random matchmaking and you are basically an expert in the game at the point make sure that you ask if any of the randoms that you're playing with if it's their first run or their first game or if they need any help uh, understanding what to do you know just be helpful and be welcoming my first run and interaction with people in this game was this right here after me telling them that I had never played the game before. All right, you guys ready? Oh. <laughs> you're, in, you're in the second mission. It's all, get... it's all good, man. Don't even worry, dude. Take your time. You do, you need a second to like, do you need a second to figure it out before we start, man? Or... Okay, cool. Uh, here. Why don't, why don't you take this, bro? Here. Whoops, sorry, I gotta, you gotta drop hold the bed. button. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Pick, yeah, pick that up. You can have that. Yeah, no problem, dude. I would I I recommend. Yeah, yeah, the Deagle's pretty strong. That was simply awesome, warm, welcoming, offered me a weapon, a very good one at that, that I still use to this moment. So thank you, bro, for doing that. I really appreciate that. But it didn't just end there. I actually went into subsequent rounds and when I made accidental extra purchases or anything like that, I would help people out and I had interactions like this. Here, hey, do you want mm -hmm. this syringe? I accidentally bought an extra one. Um, I don't even know how to store it. You put it into your wrists. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw sure? it. I'm gonna try to throw it to you. Try to catch it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep an eye out for that missing support oh. team. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Okay. So if you're new to After the Fall because you got an Oculus Quest 2 for Christmas or, you know, you just have been waiting for this game eagerly, I am so excited that we finally have the game. It's a lot of fun and I cannot wait to see what Vertigo does with it and where they take it. So if you're a newcomer to this channel, Virtual Residence, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button and, you know, consider liking the video. It helps out a lot. And I have a goal this month of trying to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of 2021 i don't think it's gonna happen but you know what i like stretch goals and i believe that anything is possible so if you found this video helpful at all please hit the subscribe button i generally have really awesome people in this community that are bolsteringly nice and just amazing communities so please consider subscribing today and become part of the virtual residence family i will see you in the next video